Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of what happened in Austria and in Germany this weekend. Yes, Lask won and I'm not wearing a Lask jersey because honestly it's a little bit too little too late in a way. So it doesn't really matter although it was a good win against an opponent where we always win away from home. And so I decided yeah, let's go with the best uh, German team that had the most impressive result and there were a few impressive results but Mainz takes the cake in my statistics statistically they had the best turn around but you know there were many many lopsided results especially in Germany uh, that I I sometimes wonder how things like that can happen because most of the times it didn't really look this way but we had quite some decisive I think results towards the you know at the Champions League race op op opening up also a uh, rally uh, relegation is a little bit opening so uh, yeah what's definitely decisive is that Dortmund is for sure the second best team and they continue to be a roller coaster they have one game yay one game nay and since they've lost to Rangers so badly they of course turned it on big time in their 1000 first game uh, at the Westfalen Stadion now signally Duna Park and boy did they did they roll over Gladbach and one has to really worry about them at the moment. But let's start in Austria where it's at the moment all about the race for the top six spots where three teams look relatively safe which is Salzburg, Sturm and Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg actually ahead of Sturm uh, I think still. Um, and then it's a tussle that up until ninth place Lusk everyone had kind of still sort of a chance. For Lask, though, uh, not winning against Klagenfurt last week, really almost, you know, the coffin is made and, you know, the nails are already there. It's just not putting a nail yet in the coffin, but the coffin is more or less there. The body is in. You just have, have, to, have to close it up. This is the analogy that I have for that because they definitely need, needed the win. Now, there's still a slim chance and they kept it alive with a good performance at Admira, where it's a team where we always win. It's almost my favorite stadium to go to because there are hardly any home fans it's a nice drive uh you don't have to go into city Vienna. it's just outside of vienna in the outskirts easily re re reachable reasonable tickets not that i was there this time around but i remember this very fondly and we last usually win so it's the perfect away day in many ways uh of course fans not happy that last for the first time this season in the league played in all pink and i think for the first time ever in all pink because usually the pink was paired with black now it was an all pink ensemble with white uh and why is it contentious because uh they are fearing that what red bull did with casino salzburg oscar salzburg taking away the colors that our current main sponsor bwt or supplier is doing the same thing with lask of kind of getting rid, rid of the black and white but uh it's still very much everything is black and white is just that the pink keeps creep, 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 creeping in. I, I for my part, am saying embrace the color. It is very unique for um, Austria to be, to, to say at least. Goals, two goals by uh, Goiginger, one by Horvath, uh, one way track. That's all I can say. And a uh, good win, but as I said, too little, too late. Uh, big wins though for Austria Vienna over Hartberg uh, who was a direct opponent so uh, Hartberg more or less also out of contention with that loss I mean it will be really really hard hard for them and also a big win for Reed who had now the surprise contenders uh, in there because ahead of the season I mean no one thought that Reed would could, could continue that it, the, the game looks a whole lot closer than it actually was because Reed had a 3-0 halftime lead and they, they had it until the 90th minute and then very, uh, goals in the 99 first made the game a whole lot tighter. Yeah, a draw might have helped Lask. Ried, of course, is the local rival. Although I think Ried cares much more about the rivalry than Lask does in many, many ways. And then Klagenfurt also more or less booking their uh, spot in the top six. is another. He's a promoted team making it into the top six. It's another big story against Alta. Salzburg beating uh, Wolfsburg with two late goals, but deservedly so. And then Sturm against Rapid Vienna. This was a huge one for Rapid. They also needed that win because now dropping points. I mean, losing, they would have been level on points with last, but they have the head-to-head, -head, so head-to-head -head counts there. But um, even the points, season outside of the top six, 
It was a great game. I mean, Sturm against Rapid Vienna is probably at the moment a game to watch in Austria if you're a neutral because bo both teams have sizable fan bases where there's always a lot of noise going around. This is Austria, the Austrian league at its very, very best between those two teams. Uh, I hope that when Lars gets the new stadium, we get a similar atmosphere, but at the moment it's Sturm and Rapid Vienna. Um, those two. Uh, it's really a uh, fan from the fan base is the best game, I would say. Sturm twice having the lead is a uh, Heuland guy that they got again, of course. Uh, great, um, great buy. I, I would eat Janscha with a penalty. I thought that Sturm uh, wins it then, but repeat, not to be diminished. And uh, Wimmer in the 83rd gets the equalizer. As I said, probably too little for repeat. Now, when we look at the current standings, you can see it's all relatively tight. I would say Hartberg more or less out of it. Uh, Klagenfurt very likely in. Austria, Vienna, Ried and Rapid. It's probably two out of those three with Lask having a very, very outside chance. Why an outside chance? Because Lask has the hard, toughest program. They have to play Salzburg at home. They have to be Wolfsburg one and two away from home. Although I think Wolfsburg away from home, they usually do well. And then a few things need to fall their, their way. I think for Hartberg at this moment, there's hardly a way in there anymore. So uh, gotta see. But uh, I really wonder. I mean, Rapid, Rapid has it in their own hand, but uh, it doesn't look good. And Reed is a team that has actually surprised many this time around. And yeah, although they are the local rival, I actually wouldn't mind them being up there. Although I would a little bit hate if Rapid was in the same group as we are, but yeah, you. So be it if it was, uh, it would actually make for maybe uh, one exciting game <laughs> in the lower, in the, uh, you know, in the qualification round, as, as it's called. Going over to Germany, where also, uh, as I said, a very in uh, a couple of interesting results. Mainz against Lever because I said it, this was, I call it, it will be an entertaining game. Yeah, I watched the Turin, which was also entertaining, but not Mainz Leverkusen and entertaining. Leverkusen twice had the lead. They missed a chance to make it 3-1, and then uh, in the last 10 minutes, Mainz turns around. Mainz playing, of course, in their rather nice carnival jerseys. I gotta say, uh, as far as carnival jerseys go, maybe it doesn't beat the Cologne one, but to me, it's a close second. This is a really, really, really uh, nice carnival well, jersey, and Mainz an uh, absolutely powerful team. Leverkusen was the informed team in Germany. They are beaten. Then, uh, in the relegation battle, it's also getting a little bit mixed up and opening up. Bielefeld beating Union Berlin. Yes, I don't have the two newest jerseys from Georgia Germany back there. I could have had the same background in uh, late 2021. Union Berlin having a horrible... They, I think, have lost now three or four in a row. Freiburg um, getting a win at Augsburg. So, Augsburg get, getting a travel. Stuttgart slowly, slowly getting uh, finally a point against Bochum. Probably would have needed a win. Wolfsburg, despite having a lead against Hoffenheim, lose to Hoffenheim at home. So Wolfsburg is also not up. Um, then on the other side of the table, uh, a tightly contested game between Köln and Frankfurt. Although if you look at um, challenges, Köln was winning almost all, all, all of them. Uh, Coach Glasner was very, very unhappy with, with, with the performance. And then very late on, Modest scores the winner for, uh, for Köln. Uh, which this Köln fan was very happy about, but I also like Frank Frankfurt. But it was a very tightly contested game. Uh, they probably would not necessarily have deserved a winner, but uh, Köln is now suddenly looking at a Champions League spot potentially or European comp competition. So uh, interesting stuff there, definitely there. Fürth had a one 0 lead against Bayern. I think at the half, however, uh, you really thought that Bayern, having lost to Bochum, having Almost lost to Salzburg and now 1 0 down to Fürth. You really thought everything's going wrong. Now they have a second half where they relatively quickly put things right. Lewandowski, then uh, Griesbeck on goal, and Lewandowski gets a late on Chupo Moting. Make it rather decisive. Rather decisive also seems the result between uh, Dortmund and Gladbach, which I first, before we say anything about game, the jersey or the kit matchup was wonderful because Gladbach played again in the white churches with the black and green striped pants and then Dortmund also having a striped look. I, I gotta say, I thoroughly enjoyed that. The game in the first half, a rather even affair where Kobel was saving and saving and saving and, and Dortmund with two chances, Reus and Marlen make it 2-0. Second half, Gladbach 
ball falling apart. Yeah, hold, well, hold, 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 for a while. For the last 20 minutes, Dortmund scored four times. The last one, which I didn't even see. Uh, pen penalty by Emre Can, where Royce could have gone for the hat trick. Well, he gave it to Emre Can. So, uh, a really, really impressive start from Dortmund, who, as I said, pendulum swings. And then Leipzig goes to Hertha, and Hertha is another team that is in serious relegation trouble, as, uh, as we'll see, 6 1. Leipzig go there. Maybe Leipzig is turning a corner. Gotta see. Gotta definitely see. Uh, but uh, looks in interesting. So let's look at the current standings. Um, as I said, not too much has changed, but you see uh, it's Bayern, it is Dortmund, it is Leverkusen. Although Leipzig now find themselves uh, hold on to the fourth spot. But then there it's time. Leipzig, Hoffmann, Freiburg, Köln, Mainz, Union. There's three points between them. Union trending down though. So uh, I would say Union Frankfurt with that loss also kind of out of the international competition. But you know, we thought that at the beginning of the season and then in the second half, they could uh, beam themselves out, out of it. Very interesting the relegation battle where just two, two weeks ago, Bielefeld seemed to be like one of the top candidates to, to, to get relegated. Suddenly only 16%. Pretty impressive stuff. Hertha though. Yeah. Looking in trouble, uh, only one point ahead of Augsburg and Stuttgart. Yeah, it will be tough to get out of there. I think the only one there we can say for sure is Stuttgart. So yeah, that was it from me. You get, of course, more of that in the stats cast. Um, I would like to know what you think about what was happening in these two leagues, uh, where you think things are going. Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!